Hello everyone, and welcome back to another C++ tutorial for absolute beginners. This video is going to be on conditionals, like I said at the end of my last video. So I've created a new project, and this is just our basic start. Uh, I'm actually going to do a series of two, maybe three, videos on if statements, just to keep them short, concise, and to the point. So today is, is just going to cover the really basics of if statements. I know we've we've used them before, but I just want to make sure everyone has a full understanding of the just the raw basics of an if statement. So before we actually get into an if statement, we're gonna use the boolean variable. Now, a boolean variable is a variable that is just like an integer. You can think of it just like an integer, except it's limited to holding the values of 0 or 1. True or false. So you can set a bool variable to true or false. And that's especially useful when you have maybe, let's say, a game, and you want to have a variable that says, is character alive? And whenever is character alive is true, the game will be allowed to continue. But if it's false, the game will end, and you'll get a game over screen. So let's just create a simple bool variable here and say true or false. That'll be your variable name. Let's give it a value of true. So and then let's create an if statement. Let's just create the basic structure of an if statement, just so we can play around in the sandbox of Boolean variables for a little while. Okay, so let's just copy and paste that right there. True or false, if true or false. Now, that doesn't look like much, but it's actually a full uh, legitimate if statement. Because if we go back to our game example with our is character alive variable, you just want to say if is character alive. And what this will do is this variable will just say, okay, my value is currently true, so the if is true. So this will just simplify to if true. And then that will evaluate as true. And we'll go to our true section of the code opposed to the false else section. So let's just add couts in our if statement just to indicate to us what we're actually printing or what our if statement is actually evaluating. Now this may seem just like something I'm doing just for the sake of a tutorial, but in fact this is something I do quite often in coding much larger projects in every programming language that I've ever used. Because what happens is you have an if statement that doesn't print anything. It's just doing a bunch of operations using a bunch of different variables doing a bunch of different things. And you have no idea whether it evaluated the true section or the else section. And you want to know why. So you just add these couts just to figure out what part of the code you're in so you can better troubleshoot your code. And what eventually you end up doing is commenting them out so they're not compiled. But when you need to, and you probably will need to go back and figure something out again, you can just comment them or uncomment them out. So let's compile this really quickly. So that's exactly what we expected. We got our true, and that's what we wanted, because this is true. So now, what, what would happen if we set our Boolean variable to zero? What would happen? Because I did say it was just like an integer variable. What would happen? Let's see. False. How about one? That's true. So you can set Boolean variables to integer values. Let's, let's even try a f float value. Let's see if that works. 1.2. That works. That's even true. How about 0 0.1? I wonder what that would be. True. OK. What about negative 0 0.1?
also true. So if you're seeing a pattern develop here, if you set a bool variable to anything but zero, it will be true. If you set a boolean variable to false, it will be zero. Uh, I don't use that convention much because it's a lot simpler to say if you want it to be false, just type false. If you spell it right, it would works a lot better. But on some occasions, I have set boolean variables equal to either either zero or one, just depending on a, a certain circumstance. So now we have our basic boolean variable. What would happen if we just set this to false instead of our using our true false variable and we set this to true and compiled? We're going to get false because it doesn't care what this is because it's not being evaluated. All the if statement sees is false and it's going to perpetually be false. It will never be anything but false. Now, it's very legitimate to use true and false just straight in an if statement like we've done here. But it's not really practical because you'd never need to, if you had an if statement that would always be false, you really wouldn't need an if statement. Same thing if you had an if statement that was always true. It would be pointless to have it. So the next thing I'm going to cover in this video is just kind of a compound if statement using OR and AND logical operators. So we're going to leave variables out and we're just going to use false and true for simplicity's sake. So we have false or true. Well, wow, that was bad spelling. True. And that's true. Because an or is saying either this or this needs to be true. If one of them is true, it's true. And on the other hand, both values need to be true. So and is the ampersand ampersand, and or was the uh, vertical bar which is just the key above the enter key. So if we evaluate that, it's false because both values need to be true. So if we set this to true, what do you get true? What if we set them both to false? What would happen? Let's find out. False, because and is saying both need to be true. Now what if we wanted to say this, both of these need to be true, but we also have another variable that if that's true, I want it to override what this is saying and just be the whole thing be true. So we could say or true and we could set this variable to false so this and statement will evaluate as false and then we'll say or true now you can think of the if statements as continually simplifying themselves so it has this long not really long but multi-step if statement so it starts here and says false and true well I know that false and true is not true and true, so that is false. So th this whole part will change to false. And we just have our basic or statement again, false or true. So let's try that. True. So it's just a really good way to think of if statements as continually simplifying themselves. So let's say we wanted to say false and true or true. So we can add, so let's parentheses to this to further specify how we want this evaluated. So let's see if that works. It does. And it's false because it's saying 
false and this whole thing. So order of operations it's going to do true or true first. So it's going to say okay this is true. So now we have false and true which is false. So if we change this to an or statement we would get true instead and we do. So if statements can be complicated they can be simple like just having an if is character alive or if true or false just evaluating a bool or you can get increasingly more complicated with different uh, ands and ors and other logical uh, evaluators in there. So let's uh, call that a lesson. The next video is going to cover less than, equal than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, less than and greater than. Uh, so we can start bringing in numbers into this and that adds a new level of complexity to our if statement. Um, so thanks for watching and I hope you're looking forward to the next video.